All right, it's the next day. My back is feeling a little bit better and all the holes have been drilled out and uh, deburred. All that's good. The switches have been cleaned of old solder and rewired as I need them to be. You can't see the one over on the left. And I'm going to change out the pots. Now, someone in the comments today on the part one video said, well, what's the difference between this little 16 millimeter and the 24 millimeter pot? You know, I said, well, it's feel, you know, the resistance of turning it, how smooth or stiff is it, and it's the taper. And he said, well, shouldn't the taper be the same? Because, you know, you've got, you know, the same diameter knob, so the pot's going to turn at the same rate uh, as far as the, as the rotation goes, same degrees of rotation. Wouldn't the taper be the same? The taper is not the same. Uh, it's a deep subject, but pot tapers are not perfect, and they rarely do what guitarists think that they do. Uh, a log taper, uh, you'd think it'd be a steady, sweet curve, like an S-curve. It's not. It's like a line, and then another line, and then another line, and another line. And uh, between this 24 millimeter alpha, one meg audio, and the 16 millimeter, they have a very different taper. In certain applications, that does not matter. I find that it does matter not a lot when it comes to guitar amps. Um, in certain points of certain amps, like a Fender with the volume and the treble pot, you'd want to use a J taper, not a A taper. And in some guitars, this is one from a Telecaster, you might want to use a 10% or a 30% or some variation thereof, especially with a guitar. The, this is a low torque one. The uh, stiffness and the feel is radically different between this low torque CTS and this little 16 millimeter alpha even though they would function the same in an instrument. The other thing to look at is the bushing material. The bushing material on the 16 millimeter alpha pots, like most 16 millimeter pots, is pretty soft metal and it's really easy to strip and you cannot tighten them all the way uh, as much as you'd like. They're held in place by this little tab which fits into the little drilled holes in the chassis. Um, so you can get them fairly tight, but you can't really get them rock solid. With the 24 millimeter pots, whether it's the CTS or the uh, Alpha, use a toothed washer. And because uh, the bushing material is much, much better, you can really torque them. Now you can't torque this as much as you can this brass shaft CTS. And not all CTSs have this nice brass shaft. Um, but you can get this material much better than the uh, cheaper metal of the 16 millimeter. Uh, this little tab here, this locator tab, the 24 millimeters have it just like the uh, 16 millimeters do. And you can use it if you want to design your amp that way, but this chassis is not prepped for that. So I just snap these off. It's pretty easy to do. There it goes. No big deal. So that with a washer, the toothed washer gives a really secure connection. Now wait, you say, why would you use this Alpha 24 millimeter when you could use a CTS 24 millimeter? And this low torque one for a Telecaster, I would use this because it is a uh, better pot, um, both in terms of feel and the taper. This vintage taper is nice, so this is not as nice as the one that Mojo Tone does, that Emerson used to do, that RS Guitar Works occasionally does. This is the uh, standard CTS low torque 10%. I prefer the 30% of the others. But uh, a lot of the current CTS pots, especially the 1 meg and 500k audios, uh, have a dead zone where below 9 o'clock there's just nothing. So nothing, 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 nothing. Wow, it's loud and no in-between. Uh, that's a real bummer. And as the AC30 uses two 500k audios and two 1 meg audios, the standard CTS is uh, not a good choice because of the dropout and uh, these low torques aren't really needed in a guitar amp and they don't come in one megs reliably. They're hard to get in one megs. And uh, the other issue is that uh, these brass ones don't come in all the values and tapers necessary for all amps. So it's fine to use one if it works, but it's not a great choice. And this will do very, very well. And I have had very few failures with them. And as they're about a buck fifty each, if you get a bad one, you just change it out. It's very nice to be able to do that. One is mounted to the chassis and it's hardwired and, you know, no big deal to change that out. 
versus a uh, little PCB mounted pot. Anyway, let me get these pots in place and get them all wired up, and then maybe we'll get a chance to hear this thing. Well, it's almost ready to be all buttoned up. It's sounding really good. All the changes that I planned to make or knew that I was going to make have been made. Uh, all the pots look very nice. The master volume install went perfectly. You know, I didn't expect it not to, but you know, sometimes they're prettier than others. This was a really pretty installation. And the new knobs look so much better. I can see that some of them are a little bit higher than others. I'll fine tune that. Um, it doesn't matter, but it matters to me that everything be just so. So any little variations in the knob heights, I'm about to change. Uh, I powered this amp on and uh, it blew a fuse because the dead rectifier tube. The rectifier tube was very, very bad. Did not pass go, did not collect $200. So I uh, changed out the fuse and put in one of my test GZ34s. Amp powers up just fine. However, the four JJ EL84s it shipped with have a pretty noticeable hum. I'll power it on so you can hear that, which tells me that they're not really well matched. So I spoke to the owner. We've got the new GZ34 and new EL84s on the way. And the other thing I noticed is that with the uh, bad EL84 is the B plus was drawn down a lot like to 280 versus about 320 ish uh, t that's typical so I expect all that to be cured once the new tubes arrive here comes the hum and normally it would come to like this and then fade away on an AC30 or other cathode bias stamp as the tubes warm up but it just doesn't fade away in fact it gets a little bit worse over about a 10 minute period the other thing I noticed uh, is that, uh, or I predict rather, is I will probably need to change this here big white resistor. That is the main resistor for the bias in the 30 watt mode. It is a 47 ohm. It measures 47.4. Anyway, I may go to a 68 or a, even a 72 ohm resistor instead and find where the tubes will be biased properly, by which I mean at, with 120 volts coming out of the wall, I want to see this somewhere between 12 to 14 watts idle dissipation. And I will get there once the new tubes arrive. So until then, I guess trust me that all the things I did are working. Uh, all the switches are working exactly as I intended. And I will let you hear all that later. Uh, that switch here uh, turns off, you know, mutes the app. Um, master volume turns everything down, um, which is a nice thing. So uh, you will hear everything is working, but that hum is just because of the old tubes, uh, not related to anything that I have done inside here. But uh, soon, soon, soon. Thanks for watching.